a producer's point of view. Yep, you already know what it is. We back in the building. New season, a new season. It's the summertime, summer grind. Producer's point of view. I'm happy to be in the building right now. I got, I got, I got family from inside, in, in town, out of town. Um, management artists. We got a lot going on right now, so we're gonna get right back into this swing of things of how we do it on a producer's point of view with my guy to my right, to your left. Introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, it was good, New York City, man. It's always a pleasure to be at the crib, you know what I'm saying? So my name's Excel. Excel, welcome Excel back. Excel, for an event producer, um, you know, thank you very much, my brother, I appreciate you. And uh, I, I know I said it off air, but I'm gonna say it on air. A legend, DWI is my guy right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Been doing a lot for the culture and uh, is very well appreciated, my bro. So thank you. Word, word. Yeah. Well, I, I also, I appreciate you for saying that. And I appreciate you for working with the independent artists coming up and, and continuing the legacy of all that, that has been done in the past and, and, and going towards the future. Because not a lot of people reach back to the youth to, you know, have a conversation with them and see what they, and, and even letting that, um, extend the hand to help right. them get to where they need to go. So we're going to definitely salute you. We're going to give you a round of applause Appreciate for that. that. All right, but tell us what's going on, what you got rocking with. All right, so with um, well, I started my career out here in New York for the most part uh, at SOBs. Okay. Uh, I, I've done a, I have a, a, an extensive resume out there with some incredible events that I put together in the past. And uh, I eventually branched off and I started working in organizing tours, mm -hmm. festivals, and concerts outside of the state of New York. Because how, I did, how long and what year did that start? Uh, in 2014. Okay. I started at SOBs and I had a three year run at SOBs. Yeah, that's a good eight and, years. That's almost a decade. Yeah, yeah, it was a solid move, man. And then, uh, and in fact, we did the first of its kind. Uh, it was a luxury yacht music festival mm -hmm. on board the, the Hornblower Infinity. Okay, I'm familiar thousand, with that. Over a thousand, thousand people? people on the giant. It was a movie, oh, it was bro. Rocking. Was yeah. it like an all-white thing or was it like yeah, a theme? It, it was an all-independent thing. You know what I'm saying? It was just oh. the, the theme was just independence, baby. You know what I'm saying? You get on this yacht. In fact, we had Uncle Ralph McDaniel on board, so he witnessed it. He witnessed the history that we made up. He was there. hosting. And he was he was doing his thing, you know, video music box thing. So you know that that's a validation in itself, just having him on on, on board. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was it was definitely a great time. But I branched off from that, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, I fell back from the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, things could get overwhelming in this business. Tell so, me about it. Yeah, so I needed a little break. The the the, 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 the what's that? The pandemic could have been the best thing. Well. Yeah, it it wasn't the best thing for everybody. Cause my pop, my father passed in 2020. Um, oh, however, my condolences. Thank you, thank you. And, but however, I had a chance to actually sit down and, and and things changed so much that it helped me change and shift with the with the interviewing and the mm -hmm. running the studio in the way that I was doing it. But in a way now that it advanced me because now I'm a teacher teaching mm -hmm. in a middle school. So That's dope. that was a way that you know I probably would have kept. Yeah, on my yeah, independent thing for that. and, yeah, and not dope, really, man. you know, taking that turn. So that that actually allowed me to switch up my gears a little bit um, and sit me down a little bit. But yeah, so um, what's what's new with the with the business now? Give, right. give them a little description of what the what the name of the business is. Give them the social media and all that. Yeah, for sure. So Nostalgia on the Rocks is a platform predominantly for R and B artists. Okay, there's a lot of resources available Nostalgia for Nostalgia on the Rock. I see what you do with that. Ah, so okay. you know what I mean. So, but there's there's a lot of platforms for hip, for hip hop. Mm -hmm. There ain't enough there ain't enough platforms for R and B. So we wanted to focus on R and B. Mm -hmm. We want to bring that 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 vintage classic you know that essence back that soul back which right. is being taken away from us because of pop culture so nostalgia in the rocks uh my partner and i vicky secrets shout out to vicky secrets vicky out there in the 757 in virginia yeah I, i'm coming back to virginia too my sister just got an airbnb down there so i can i can come down to virginia Hit us up, bro. Yeah, we, got, we got a movement out in va bro you gotta pull up oh, oh so I, maybe I got, maybe we set something up i'll come in like like i'll come like Broadcast live from down there, like pretty much what Ralph McDaniels does. But I do we'll, that. Visually. We'll talk offline. Yeah. I got right. something for right. you. Cool, we gonna cool. set that up. That's, a, that's I'm, a nice I'm free place. all summer until the end of August. So let's set it up. That's a nice place. So we are gonna right. set some place up after right. this. But um, but yeah. So we have Nostalgia and the Rocks out there right now, which is a brand that curates platforms for for R and B artists. And um, Mo Woods was uh, he participated in our in our performance, in our concert, and 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 um and he had the opportunity to um actually be selected by Polo, who's the director A and R from Rock Nation, who we invited down to Virginia. He was out there. He was in attendance that night, and uh, he liked what Mo Woods did. So Polo invited him to for a meeting out here in New York, 
and uh, and also, you know, we were able to set up the situation where he's here now with us also enjoying this platform. But that's what Nostalgia on the Rocks do for all independent artists, not necessarily in Virginia, basically anywhere in the country. If you're interested in performing, if you're R&B, if you're actually a musician, feel free to contact us on Instagram at Nostalgia on the Rocks. Send us a DM. We'll be happy to make something happen for y'all, man. Exactly. Make sure y'all follow that information. It's on the screen right now, so make sure y'all follow that information. Nostalgia on the rocks. Mm-hmm. Um, we definitely appreciate you um, for bringing the talent again um, and, and keeping this thing going. Through everything that you've been through, you still reach back and get back to the to you. Is there anything that you would want to you would you would want to say is your new mission statement? You know, coming after the pandemic, because I like to ask everybody, what is life like now? Yeah, for sure. It's all about resources. Mm-hmm. If I, if for me, it's about building resources. That's what the pandemic taught me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I have the resources, that I have no reason to panic right. during emergency situations. So e- including even, even in my career now as an event producer, is about building my resources and just having a relationship with you mm-hmm. contributes to my resources. You know what I'm saying? Because you're part of media. You're a big part of media. So to me, it's all about building resources moving forward after the pandemic. Because worst case scenario, if you have the resources, you have nothing to worry about. Exactly. And that's that's so that's words that's words to grow on. I right, um well I, I can't wait to hear what we what you got for me today. This this young artist is just here. It's first time in the Bronx. Thanks. Let's just wake that up. First time in the Bronx, <laughs> but not his first time in New York City, but first time as an adult. So you can pass pass on the mic. Let's see let's see what's going on. Introduce yourself to the to the fam and the fans out there, good brother. Yeah, man. What's up, everybody? Uh, I go by the name of Mo Woods. I uh, from Virginia. Like, yeah, like uh like. DWI was saying, man, it's my first time in the Bronx. It feels good. The love is here. Oh, yeah. Sure, I feel it. Uh, the energy is nice. I, I love how active everybody is. When you go outside, you just see a lot of people outside. It's something you norm- normally don't really see in Virginia too much. Really? So, All right, so, that, happy to so be that's here. one of the things that stuck out. Uh, how did you, you drove in? You drove yeah, in? we drove in. So y'all came in through Manhattan over the bridge, most likely over the Washington, yeah, Washington Lincoln Bridge. Tunnel. Oh, Lincoln Tunnel. Okay. And which borough did you hit first? Uh, uh, Brooklyn? I'm not. I don't know if I call. I think we drove straight in. So in Manhattan. We were in Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. So Manhattan, Manhattan, Manhattan. Lower Manhattan is active, and it, but it's 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 diverse. Mm. When you go through a Harlem, did you go through Harlem yet? Nah, I haven't been right, to any so of the other boroughs. Ask if you're going. If you're leaving from the Bronx, try ask ask some whoever's driving to to go pass through Harlem, and you'll see you'll see a different type of love. Because then you'll see. A lot of our people down there, like outside, a lot. It's a lot going, on, especially on a nice day like today. Mm. Um, it's a lot going on. But um, sure. anyway, salute to you for for coming through the city. Thank you for having um, me. So let's talk about this career of yours. How long have you been doing music? So I mean, as a kid, of course, I've been. Uh, it was in the choir at church and everything like that. Um, basically, around like 2017 is when I started releasing my own music and trying to become my own artist, mm-hmm. like publicly. So I'll say yeah, since about 2017. Okay, so 2017 went to three, three five, five years. Now. Yeah, that's a five good, that's a good time. But you was technically you've been singing and you've been in yeah in church. So yeah, technically I've been around it a lot and been practicing it. I just didn't get to the point where I was actually publicly trying to be an artist until about 2017. Got it, got it, got it. All right. So what was the first? What was the? What was what came to you easiest? To being an artist like what what did you didn't have to practice on was it being performing singing you know writing like what was the uh i would say writing came very easy really to me. are you good yeah. in writing in school yeah so uh when i was let's, in college, let's wake that up let's, yeah, let's talk I about a, i was a communications major in college before that um in high school my favorite subject was english it was uh, i don't know it was just something about Having, that's not a bad thing i mean yeah, you, you mean just having that opportunity to be creative mm-hmm. and just just write like no one's telling you what to do you just so write. creative writing did you ever take a creative writing class no not not really no. just been in like english classes and just you know the projects that they give you you got to read a book or you got to mm-hmm. write your own passage on certain things you know like just having that freedom and being able to be able to be creative with it mm-hmm. i think that's what was able to come to me so easily was just the fact that it was so fun and it was my own uh singing of course that took time uh, right of course i was in the choir so that's i was getting right. that so what uh, what experience. part did you play in the choir like was you deep was you mid uh, i don't no, know i was like oh man yeah. i wish i could remember i would say probably like uh alto i think that was uh, like 
kind of higher up. I was never like the deep voice. Okay, so how does that work though? How does how does the conductor or whoever's controlling it? How does how do you know what part you're supposed to play? Like yeah, so uh, she was uh, also the pianist. So she would have like a group of people, and she'd be like, "Okay, you guys, you guys sing up here, do 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 do." And then she'd be like, "You got do 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 do." Like she's really breaking. And you it just down have for to everybody. manage your voice to exactly. stay in the octave that you're supposed to stay. In. Exactly, and she'll she'll let you know like you sing here. So it's like, but she bases it off of what she already like has heard from you. Mm -hmm. So it was real easy like that. But yeah. Yo, that's that's that's, that, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Pocket. So I right, so what was some of your influential artists that came up that you came up listening to like, or that your maybe your folks listened to that made you say, damn, I want to be a singer. I want to be like. Yeah. So uh, on my for my parents when I started going through their CD collections and stuff like CD that. CD collection. My Look, dad. Young is don't know nothing about the CD collection. He lucky he didn't say vinyl collection because that's I mean, a whole. Yeah, other. I got on that late. So but that so that wasn't really my influences back then. But CDs for sure. So my dad was huge on like Neo. Mario, Omarion, Usher. Oh, so that so, so that versus the other day must have been just up your alley. Did you watch it? <laughs> yeah, I saw little clips. I didn't watch oh, the whole okay. thing. Thank in you its entirety. didn't listen. It was too long. But go, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, those were like in the beginning. On my dad's side, my sister was real big on like uh, TLCs, three LWs, uh, Backstreet Boys, like the groups, Bow Wow, Romeo, like the younger. Um, younger acts when we were that age mm -hmm. uh so that was initially as i grew up you know chris browns t pains uh then you know more uh recently it's been like SZA. honestly has been okay one of my that's biggest th those are those are lately. great influences actually because they can actually sing and they're mad creative exactly they're mad creative I just love their freedom so uh do you remember your first record that you that you recorded uh and, yeah and where you did it yeah the first record I recorded and released that was called understand mm -hmm. and that I did in my house right after I had this girl that I, uh, I was dating at the time we had just had this crazy argument, argument. it's always pain yeah, yeah. It, Pleasure yeah, and always, pain. it always comes from pain right but I mean, it's all good but yeah so after did, the she, did she hear the song yeah, she heard the song was right she, after. Was she mad that you put her name in the title? Or? No, I didn't put her name in it or anything. I was more so just speaking to the situation that we were going on and kind of like giving my side once I was able to like calm down. Because in the midst of it, I was just like, you know, it's arguing. How old were you when you started that relationship? You're young now. How old are you now? I mean, that in, I'm 26 right now. Okay. That's a yeah. So good this, industry name. I mean, this is back in, uh, when I was about 23. Yeah. And that was your first real relationship? No, that wasn't my first, well, no, it wasn't my first real relationship, but that was actually my most invest, the relationship I most invested in, mm -hmm. in terms of emotion, in terms of like mental, like everything. Like I was in it. That was the first time I was like, yo, I And really you was only 23. Damn. Yeah. So yeah, I made that song right after our argument because it felt like we were about to break up and it, it, the song was basically saying like, I don't understand why it has to get to this point. Like. Oh, man. I, I, I Those are the lyrics? I thought lyrics. you was going to bust, bust, bust eight balls or something for me. Yeah, I mean, you remember? it was like, I said, Seasons change, but you're the only reason why it's colder, cold. The climate ain't the same. Uh, I can't even remember. Yeah, no, that, lyrics, yo, yeah, round of applause for that. Like that was, that. <laughs> appreciate it. That was, um... And that was something that was inspired. So do you find yourself being inspired by other people's life and stories to create your music or do you everything come from from your brain um yeah it kind of has to come from my brain for the most part and the things that i've experienced i can't really go into depth about things that i haven't experienced that i may have seen through other people right so i don't really try to you know grab from other people's experience to make my own unless it's like you know some uh i'll be talking to a friend or something and be like oh I, they might actually benefit from maybe a song like this. Mm -hmm. So if I can relate to it from what I've done, then I'll try to like create a song that maybe helps them out too. But it's not gonna come solely from just from their, their experience. experience. I, I got to it. Have so you have to have something some... at some point. Got it. So a lot of your record. So do you create scenarios too? Like if you could just create a nonfiction, mm, or a fiction. I don't student. tend to. No, I don't tend to just create my own scenarios. Like it really has to be 
real. Like it has to have happened in real time. For you to put your all into it. So yeah. somebody can't give you a, a, they can't like give you a, a song and have you sing it for them? Like you don't feel like you could tap into it? emotionally because yeah. it's not your story yeah no i think okay. i think i could tap into that oh, okay you just understand like what they the want emotional to... part of it yeah do you like, have to go have a breakup to to actually <laughs> to actually feel sad or can you make yourself feel sad uh you put yourself in no I, I feel like one i felt sad enough times to kind of understand <laughs> the emotion <laughs> wow side. that's not good at, at 26 <laughs> y'all y'all women need to get it together out there start treating my guy like like this man he's a good guy i don't know what's going on out there in the state and pool so, um, all right, so tell me what life is like in Virginia as far as performing and moving around. I, I know your, your management that's here now, you connected to, mm. you know, people that's already doing things. So in New York City, it's really uh, like every night there's something going on. Like there's mm. a showcase, there's a there's an artist uh, listening party, there's always something, there's celebrities, there's a lot going on in New yeah. York City. So tell me what life is like in Virginia. I would say in Virginia, it's I guess there's a couple similarities to up here. It's just not on the scale that it is, of course, because I guess the uh, like the musical infrastructure in Virginia isn't as big. So still, with with Timberland and them coming out of Virginia, it's still not like that. Yeah, I mean, it's like the the passion and the love for music is definitely there, but in terms of like the infrastructure, not necessarily. But a lot of uh, individual people there, they they host showcases. All right, so yeah. This is that's this is a two part question. So uh -huh. what can be changed? Like what has to be? What do you feel is missing that could be added? That if you was in a position that you would change about the the climate of Virginia's uh, music industry? Um, I would just say uh, more real musical infrastructure. Like these things are known solely for uh, musical. Like venues or, or events or just like how we got SOBs. So we know that SOBs is a venue yeah, where, and yeah, like, where certain things happen. For example, like, yeah, you got your SOBs like, oh, yeah, you go here and there's so much like musical history with SOBs that is like, okay, this is a spot. Like, and got it's it, respected it. as that spot. So whenever you're in there and understanding like who owns it and everything, it's like, that's what. I feel Virginia needs more of is just those types of infrastructures. Understood, understood. So right now, um, when headliners come there, where where are the events at? Like, what where do they go? Yeah, I mean, we have a uh, we have a few places like the Scope, the Norva, uh, Granby Theater. Uh, but you got to be a mainstream artist to get those theaters. Uh, not necessarily. You have to if you have the pool, then you can get in there. You know, because you have to the basically all the venues want to know is that they can have a return like right. it's business. You know what I'm saying? So not just anybody can really get in there because you need to pull first and they have to see that it's a, a business venture that they actually could, you know, benefit from on both sides, really. But um, I mean, I'm sure like you give them the right, right number, right price. They'll try to make things happen for right. you. Right. Or, or you can put together a tour collectively with some some of the more polished artists and then get some undercards or some independent artists coming mm -hmm. up and some other you know vendors and things like that to collectively cover that overhead and then you just have the space to be able to put that on a fly and say we rock whatever you know whatever the, the theater or the, the venue is yeah that's just that's just a way to think about it i mean it's a lot of things are going to change coming out of the, out of what we what we went through but the one thing about the arts is i think you know as long as there's a fan base for it and the people that understand, like, if we want people to be drawn to Virginia, we got to have something there for them. Like, people come to New York because everything is here. Like, exactly. that's why the people go to L.A., people go to Atlanta. Virginia is not, like, a no-name state, but it is a, what kind of state? Is it a red state, Virginia? Uh, it, it, yeah, it goes Commonwealth. back and forth. Really. So y'all got those things to fight through, too, and that's, you know, that's the political part of it. But as far as the music side, y'all got a lot of greats that came from there. So y'all have a lot yeah. of history. Um, that y'all can pull from as well too. Exactly. But tell me, all right. So tell me what uh, we 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 passed midway. Yeah. So let me. Um, I, I normally ask this question midway yeah. through the show. Um, you got three things that you can do, right? You got thirty days that you can only do one of the three things. Which one would you do and why? Produce, perform, or promote. So you you got you got a song. Mm -hmm. Would you like? Would you rather spend thirty days producing producing music, promoting it, or performing it? And why? Mm. I'd probably say spend 30 days performing the song. 
smart man that's that's one of the yeah, smart exactly. answers that you can do you can do all three things mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of exposure that comes through performing it um and plus you could do the song but if you can't really do it live then you putting 30 days into making the song might not really help you out the most right you can't perform you can it. learn a lot more for performing it because you might you see the the vibe from the from the audience exactly. and you might change a word by accident because you forgot it but it might sound better so you can actually mm -hmm. go back and remix it or yeah. you know a, a band might be playing in the back and now you come out with a live version of it there's so many things that can come from performing that so exactly. i think that is that is a that is a great answer that i normally you know it's no wrong answer but right. just some artists just need to know that that performing aspect is, is, is valid like because not a lot of people can perform like and that's my next question um you singing r b do you are you just like a you just stand in front of the mic and sing or do you dance with it like what's your what's your go-to move yeah on stage I mean I don't <laughs> I don't really have like go-to dance moves just yet uh I'm very interactive though so I like okay. to make sure that I'm like looking at people when I perform making sure that even like the way I move I try to be a little smooth with it things like that I don't have like my little two-step or my little right, jig right, yet right. but I definitely try to make sure I'm being interactive with the people make sure I'm covering the entire stage just kind of focusing on the stage presence and making sure that people are engaged with me as well mm -hmm. but I don't really have like my moves down yet I gotta get that right you gotta get it well that's good I mean at this stage right now that's you know what you need to work on mm -hmm. and those all of that is important those three things all are important when it comes to being a polished artist you look at some of the, the better artists um the Chris Browns the the you name it the ones that you see on mm -hmm. social media all the time or performing all the time dancing engaging with their audience, putting out music or, or just putting out something though that's that's the formula that and then you look at the success then you can realize why certain mm -hmm. people do more than others and i think right um you definitely always want to learn from people's mistakes and from their success at the same time when you're watching some of these artists Great. because you coming up so the singing part you sound like you got that down already i'm gonna give you your credit your props right Appreciate now like you definitely like you i just i just challenged you and you took a challenge some people would be like ah, i gotta think about what you like you already was ready to go and that's 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 important to be on go mode all the time when um when in these situations mm -hmm. when being interviewed by anybody as an artist you don't want to turn down an opportunity like this exactly. is being recorded obviously it's going to be used as your marketing now going forward and you want to make sure when you look back five years and you say I interviewed with DWI in the Bronx for the first time at the Matrix yo I gave my all and you know I learned this from you know I learned this uh experience from that right. experience right so let's talk about the music and where it's at now so people who can um appropriately go and find it and download it and stream it and buy it and whatever else you want them to do let's talk about that yeah for sure man uh all my music's on all digital streaming platforms right now under mo woods that's m-o space woods w-o-o-d-s normal spelling uh that's everywhere uh in terms of like social media presence that's mo woods please i have a lot of videos on my uh, social media mm -hmm. uh, and youtube of course and that's also under mo woods please as well like Mo Woods, please. please. Like Real that. Simple. Mo Woods, please. And what's the please for? You uh, are they asking for you or are they saying like please? Like stop, That's just stop like singing. the uh, talk to me nice aspect. Oh, okay. Give them uh, um give them your contact information as far as your your email if they want to if producers want to send you beats or whatever. You have a um, email where they can send that to Yeah, you? for sure. Look, if you want to send me beats, you can send that to Mo Woods, please at gmail.com. M O W O O D S P L E A S E. Mo Woods, please. Mo at Woods, gmail please. Dot com. All right. And if you could work with one artist right now that you feel like if you did one record with rapper or singer or songwriter that you can, or producer that you can work with right now that you think would put you in the game that you feel like, damn, if I just, had, if I had that record, I could do the same thing that like XYZ. Who would that be and why? Oh, God. Uh, Cause this is something you should have been thinking about when you first started. It's gotta be one person that yeah, you feel like it, you did a record. It's like, I'm trying to just choose one of them. Cause I have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of artists that I want to work with mm -hmm. that I feel like are right in my pocket and could like really put me up there with them. Mm -hmm. Do me a uh, favor, bump that show over just so that we can, yeah. we can, we can have space now that management stepped out and we can finish this off. Okay. So what you got? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I really want to work with like female artists, like I was saying earlier, SZA. I feel like so, her and I could come together and make a very dope track just because of our vibes. I have a very like natural, earthy, outside vibe to myself. Mm -hmm. And with SZA, she's kind of created that same kind of uh, vibe for herself as well. Right. And I feel like if we came together and created a track together, it would really like set me over the top. like. I agree. I agree. Like that. So would it be like a back-to-back, a, -back, a duet type of thing? Like where y'all would, you would do your part, she would do it, and y'all would sing together? And yeah, I feel like it would be like, you know, her verse, my verse, and then group verse, you know, us kind of like going back and forth. Together on the hook? Yeah. Well, no, like... Uh, no, I'm asking, would y'all, would y'all, would y'all, would like... Oh, yeah, at the end, of course. voices? Like, yeah, we, it'd be like that tradition, almost like the traditional R&B song, but then with the modern twist to it. So we would have like our, like our come together moment at the end mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be like super would it be a good relationship song where something good is happening positive or would it be something something traumatic that that happened and y'all arguing with each other on the track i think it would be like a, a a hopeful track like oh we both been through this but we like we want this to happen later on a positive note like, got it that's a like good. this has happened in the past that's but we good. can that's still you know. so we're putting that into the universe now this is a recording sure. it's going out there we're going to tag scissor yeah, in this scissor. in this video when we post it i do that very intentionally when i do these interviews with um new artists because i think that certain things are more obtainable than you think like mm -hmm. sometimes it would take like scissor to hear you say that and she might be like oh that's gonna be a dope idea let me go see what this this guy sounds like and then she'll go to your page and just all right you never know it's like yeah. you know what i mean it's not like you you got to shoot your shot you just you know you close right. mouth don't get fed Agreed. um all right so last question about the industry okay do you feel like the industry part the r&b industry is doing better than what it was in the 90s or do you feel like it could still use more help um i think it would <laughs> Like the trajectory of it in the 90s with all the artists that were there, it was shooting up and it was like great. In the 90s and the 2000s, I think currently, I don't think we're in like huge trouble or anything. I think that the focus has shifted very much so on rap and et cetera, thing, uh, genres like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's doing well though. I've, I've seen a lot of new r&b acts like you know your lucky days your brent right, bias right. uh give on most recently i feel like so it's like they're still there and that presence is still very much strong mm -hmm. so i don't i mean the 90s man the 90s r&b is like the golden age of r&b to a lot of people so and i, I kind of agree with that because i mean most of today's artists look up to that era of music so it's like that must have been the golden age of music. So, right. I mean, we're not, it's not all the way like down from the 90s, but you know, just holding our own right now. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Appreciate you for um, spending this time with me, you and you and your management. Um, this is, uh, this is dope. We actually also have a, um, a show that airs every, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're live on right now on, um, on DJ Kid New. Um, app which is also on iHeart and it's from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and it's on um, what New York sounds like radio um, so you are the first contestant on the new season so let's round of applause for that for Virginia Virginia's in the building um, so what I want you to do because we're gonna play your record after this on the show okay. I would like you to do a drop for the song you're gonna play and shout your name out all right so uh, yeah I go by the name Mo was uh, the song it's gonna be called I Know. That's the song I'm gonna go ahead and do. And uh, it goes a little bit like this. Like, <clears throat> I know hey, what I gotta do to make you mine. And I know hey, that you would rather take your time. I know. Ooh. You think I got something to hide, but what for? You should enjoy the ride, girl. I don't understand what's in your way. Yeah. If we ain't making love, I'm making your day. Yeah. I want to wake up to your warm embrace. This that love you hope don't go away. Yeah. yeah. 
that's called I know. My name's Mo Woods. All right. Thank you for listening to What New York Sounds Like Radio, DWI Producers Point of View. We'll be right back. Later. The Producers Point of View.